In this video, I'm going to discuss the light independent reactions. These are also referred to as the dark reactions or uh, the Calvin cycle of photosynthesis. I do want to remind you before this phase, we had the light dependent reactions happening in the thylakoid membranes, um, those stacks of Grainer. And during those uh, steps, oxygen was produced and that is leaving the plant through, out, uh, out through its tomato. Um, and then we also had ATP and NADPH produced. These are going to go to the dark reactions to play a role there. So let's look at how the carbon dioxide is fixed here into the cycle. Uh, this is the first step that we're going to discuss, the carbon fixation step. We see that we need an um, enzyme here called Rubisco. If this enzyme is not present, then uh, carbon dioxide cannot be fixed um, into um, the cycle. So if it's there, it will uh, fix the carbon dioxide to a molecule uh, called ribulose uh, 1,5-bisphosphate. Um, it is a 5-carbon molecule and uh, it has a phosphate group attached to each end of it. Therefore, the name ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. So that is step one, and it will form for us three unstable intermediates. Uh, these are uh, unstable because they have uh, two phosphates there attached to them. Uh, this is a six-carbon molecule, of course, because one carbon went in with the RUBP, and now we have a six-carbon molecule. And on each end, there is a phosphate group attached. So the following step uh, will be um, our PGAL synthesis. And PGAL synthesis is uh, uh, going to start off by forming for us here uh, some PGA molecules first. And then we're going to see the formation of uh, PGAL. So uh, PGA, these are uh, phospho glycerate molecules. Oops. Um, so the PGA uh, is phosphoglycerate. And um, these are three carbons big, and they still do have one phosphate attached to them. So what happened here is the unstable intermediates were cleaved in half. We had three of them here at the beginning. And so if you cleave three in half, you'll end up with six of these phosphoglycerate molecules. Uh, next, what we would need is uh, a molecule of ATP to come in for each of these uh, six uh, PGAs to transform them into um, PGAL. So PGAL is a phosphoglyceraldehyde, and uh, we will see those uh, uh, six ATPs come in and, uh, and leave as six ADP. Um, and uh, six inorganic uh, phosphates. Uh, we also will need some of the NADPH to come in here from our um, light-dependent reactions. Of course, that's where uh, the electrons were picked up. And so the electrons are going to be released here and um, an oxidation is occurring there. And it is um, reducing phosphoglycerate into phosphoglyceraldehyde. So phosphoglyceraldehyde is uh, still a three carbon molecule and um, it will next, in the next step, um, exit the cycle. Uh, in fact, only one of the six will, uh, molecules will exit, um, five will stay behind and this one that exits will join with another PGAL from a previous turn of the cycle and if you have two or three carbon molecules and, of course, the correct enzyme available here, we see the formation of one molecule of glucose. Uh, now, glucose, um, our C6H12O6 molecule here, can be uh, joined together. Um, if you add two of them together, you can form um, sucrose. And if you keep adding more and more together, you can form starch and e eventually even some other organic compounds can form. And most of the energy will be stored in the form of starch in um, a plant. 
So this step three that we had here, um, our PGAL synthesis, um, is followed by a step here where the PGAL molecules are combined to form glucose, which is then used to form sucrose and eventually starch. Uh, this brings us back to what we um, had here happening, of course, was five PGAL molecules staying behind in the cycle. And those uh, uh, still are um, three carbons big each. And they will go through a series of reactions next um, here during a phase we refer to as regeneration of RUBP. Um, so this is a multi-step process, but we just have one arrow here. We're simplifying things a bit over here. But the regeneration step is there for the purpose of regenerating RUBP, some ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. So for each um, of these uh, PGAL molecules, we're going to have to uh, bring in some more ATP energy. And we are going to have to uh, bring in um, the energy to convert with this multi-step process, the PGAL or the phosphoglyceraldehyde back into ribulose-1,5-bisphosphate. So um, as I said, it is, it's uh, multiple steps occurring here. We've simplified it. We don't have all the reactions drawn in there, but we do need three ATPs in the end here if we want to produce our uh, three uh, molecules of our UBP up here. So that brings us back to the start of the cycle. And if we have more CO2 available, that can also be incorporated and the cycle will continue as long as we have the enzyme, as long as we have carbon dioxide and some ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. This happens in the stroma of the uh, chloroplast. Uh, and um, of course, um, the light-dependent reactions occurred in the grain where we have the tylakoid membranes.